Walking in a winter wonderland Gone away is the bluebird Here to stay is the new bird He sings a love song as we go along Walking in a winter wonderland He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no, man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire to face and afraid the plans that we made walking in a winter wonderland. Terry DeForest and I get to play rector here at St. Paul's. And uh, it's a pleasure for us to welcome our good friends, uh, Shannon Butcher, Bill McBurney, Tim Shaw, Stacy McGregor, and our venerable friend, Jim Sandals, for, uh, yes. to welcome you. 
Um, and um, so nice to have to be scrambling to find more chairs. Um, we uh, are delighted that this Christmas classic is uh, being presented here um, this afternoon. And uh, we are uh, just um, so very glad of our collaboration and friendship with these uh, wonderful uh, musicians and people. That's you, yeah. <laughs> um, we also are, uh, want to remember our relationships with others, in particular the indigenous peoples of this uh, land. And so let us acknowledge our presence on the ancestral lands governed by the dish with one spoon wampum between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anishinaabe Nation, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the lands and resources around the Great Lakes. In a spirit of reconciliation, may we always seek to respect the history, spirituality, and culture of indigenous peoples and uphold our continuing responsibility as treaty people. And in that spirit, let us delve into the good news that uh, Charles Schultz's gospel might uh, wish for us to receive. Charlie first, pray later.
Christmas time was here, the time when snowflakes fell softly and the sounds of carols rang through the air. It was a time filled with happiness, and for children everywhere, it was their favorite time of year. But one little boy wasn't feeling very excited about Christmas. I just don't understand Christmas, Charlie Brown said as a light snow began to fall. I might be getting presents, sending Christmas cards, and decorating trees, but I'm still not happy. I always end up feeling depressed. You're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem, Linus replied. Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you're the Charlie Browniest. <laughs> At the local skating pond, the boys found their friends playing a round of Crack the Whip. Snoopy grabbed Linus's blanket to drag him onto the ice, but he caught Charlie Brown in it and sent him flying into a snowbank. Shannon is the high point of my day. <laughs> Charlie Brown wasn't surprised. Things like that always happened to him. In the holiday season, when he didn't get cards and even his own dog ignored him, only made it more obvious. He needed someone to talk to. Lucy dashed over to her psychiatry booth to meet Charlie Brown. May I help you? She asked. I'm in sad shape, Charlie Brown replied with a sigh. My trouble is Christmas. I just don't understand it. Instead of feeling happy, I, I feel sort of let down. Lucy knew just how to fix Charlie Brown's problem. 
You need to get involved in a Christmas project, she declared. How would you like to be the director of our Christmas play? Me? I don't know anything about directing a Christmas play, Charlie Brown fretted. Don't worry, I'll be there to help you, Lucy said. I'll meet you at the auditorium. Just then, Snoopy walked past, carrying a box filled with decorations. Charlie Brown followed Snoopy back to his doghouse. What's going on here? Charlie Brown asked. Snoopy handed him a flyer, and Charlie Brown read, Find the true meaning of Christmas. Win money, money, money at the spectacular super colossal lights and display contest. Oh, no. My own dog has gone commercial. I can't stand it. Charlie Brown flew the flyer onto the ground.
way to the auditorium, Charlie Brown ran into his sister. I've been looking for you, big brother, she said sweetly. Will you please write a letter to Santa Claus for me? Sally knew exactly what she wanted, but her list was so long, she decided it would be easier to ask for money. How about tens and twenties, she suggested. Tens and twenties? Ugh, even my baby sister, Charlie Brown groaned. Surely Christmas was about more than money and presents. In the auditorium, the whole Peanuts gang danced to a jazzy tune that Schroeder played on the piano. Charlie Brown walked to the stage. Let's get right down to work, he said. It's important that you pay strict attention to the director. Am I right? I said, am I right? But no one paid any attention to Charlie Brown. They had started dancing again. We're going to do this play, and we're going to do it right. Lucy, pass out those scripts and costumes. One by one, the kids found out their role in the play. Frida would play the innkeeper's wife, Pigpen would play the innkeeper, Shermie would play the shepherd, and Snoopy would play all the animals in the script, and even some that weren't. Let's rehearse the scene at the inn, directed Charlie Brown. Let's take it from the top. Places, action! But once again, the kids started dancing and fooling around. Charlie Brown rolled his eyes. Good grief. exclaimed. If we're ever going to get this play off the ground, we've got to have some cooperation. Let's face it, replied Lucy. We all know that Christmas is just a big commercial racket. Well, this is one play that's not going to be commercial, Charlie Brown insisted. We need the proper mood. We need a Christmas tree. 
Lucy nodded excitedly. A great, big, shiny aluminum Christmas tree. That's it, Charlie Brown. You get the tree, I'll handle this crowd. Okay, I'll take Linus with me. The rest of you, practice your lines, Charlie Brown said firmly. Get the biggest aluminum tree you can find, Charlie Brown, called Lucy. Yeah, do something right for a change, Charlie Brown, added Peppermint Patty as the boys walked into the cold winter night. They followed a set of gleaming spotlights onto a Christmas tree lot. It was filled with shiny metal trees, polka dotted trees, and trees in every color of the rainbow. Clank, clank, clank. Linus knocked on one of the metal trees. Gee, do they still make wooden Christmas trees? He didn't see anything like that in the Christmas tree lot. Then Charlie Brown spotted a small, scraggly pine tree. It had a wooden trunk and soft green needles. This little green one here seems to need a good home, he said excitedly. I don't know, Charlie Brown, Linus said. Remember what Lucy said? This doesn't seem to fit the modern spirit. I don't care, Charlie Brown insisted. We'll decorate it and it will be just fine for our play. Besides, I think it needs me.
Soon, Charlie Brown and Linus walked back onto the stage. We're back, Charlie Brown announced as he set the tree on top of Schroeder's piano. When the kids rushed over to see the tree, their mouths dropped open in shock. The scraggly little tree was not what they had expected. You were supposed to get a good tree. Can't you even tell a good tree from a poor tree? Lucy asked. You're hopeless, Charlie Brown, added Peppermint Patty.
died. <laughs> I shouldn't have picked this little tree. Everything I do turns into a disaster. I guess I really don't know what Christmas is all about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about, he exclaimed. Sure, Charlie Brown, replied Linus. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Linus crossed to the center of the stage. The lights dimmed and a spotlight shone down on him. And there were shepherds in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. The angel came and said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards all. Everyone was silent when Linus finished. That is what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown, he finally said. Charlie Brown picked up the tree and walked outside. He stared up at the night sky. Linus is right, he said. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. I'll take this little tree home and I'll decorate it and I'll show them that it really will work well in our play. When he passed Snoopy's doghouse, Charlie Brown pulled a shiny red ornament off of it and proudly hung it on the tree. But the tiny tree buckled under the weight of the ornament. A look of horror crossed Charlie Brown's face. I've killed it. Oh, everything I touch gets ruined. He hung his head in defeat. Charlie Brown sadly walked away. Then the rest of the Peanuts gang arrived. I never thought it was such a bad little tree, Linus said. He straightened the tree's bent trunk and wrapped his blanket around its base. It's not bad at all. Really, it just needs a little love. Without speaking, the other kids took the lights and ornaments off Snoopy's doghouse and used them to decorate. Before their very eyes, it turned into a beautiful Christmas tree. Charlie Brown walked up to the group barely recognized the tree. What's going on here? He exclaimed. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! The kids all exclaimed. And together they gathered around that beautiful tree. And they all began to sing. Thank you. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I um, love this part where I get to say the obvious. It's why I get paid so much. <laughs> we are blessed. We are blessed with the gift of life, with each other, with this community, a wonderful place in which to gather and make music and friends and gather and make friends and worship together. For these blessings, we are grateful and thankful as uh, I walk and drive around uh, Hamilton these days, um, you know the movie Wonderful Christmas? Is that the Jimmy Stewart movie? A Wonderful Life? Yeah. Tomato, tomato. There. Isn't the city starting to look a little bit like that scene? when there's so many people who are uh, out begging and pushing around shopping carts with their collections of bottles and so on. Uh, we're blessed, and I was blessed to see a wonderful thing that uh, hadn't occurred to me, so I'm gonna offer it to you before we uh, sing our final tunes. And that is, somebody had uh, in their little uh, Kia Forte, if that's a thing, uh, put together on their driver's seat uh, plastic bags with um, apples and uh, bits of food and whatnot and possibly gift certificates so that every time they came to a stop sign and someone came to them, they would roll down their window and hand out a bag of this. In fact, uh, at a one stoplight, it looked to me like this was a routine. The driver pulled up, honked the horn, and gave the handout. God foretell we don't need to be doing that forever. Please, friends, support the food banks and the nurturing of the homeless and the helping of those with mental health issues. Please, in the name of the child who came and lived among us, that we might find peace. Thanks for listening, and thanks be to God for people on this planet like Shannon Butcher. Rob Howard. Uh, the Reverend Canon Terry DeForest is back there somewhere. And in that corner, later serving uh, Anglican government approved socially distanced beverages will be Sandra Harper. Stacy. I fixed the piano and played at McGregor. Bill McBurney. Tim, I'm better looking than Jim Shaw. And I'm the usual suspect. And and I'll be home for Christmas.
This next song is listed as winter on the horizon, but we woke up this morning and winter is here. It's not, it's not on the horizon. We are in the midst of winter. So we're going to do a, a different song. Um, this is a song about uh, the best gift that you can give at Christmas time. And so it's called, You're Getting Nothing for Christmas But My Love. It is by me. The twelve days of Christmas are almost through My shopping list has dwindled down to only you I'd like to give you something to show You're getting nothing for Christmas but my love A gift that's strong and deep and true This genuine article will fit you like a glove A limited edition just for you We might come in a little package of only five for three but I tell you, boy, without a doubt, there's a lifetime guarantee. You're getting nothing for Christmas but my love. Nothing for Christmas but my
six, but I promise, boy, without a doubt, I won't play any tricks. You're getting nothing for Christmas but my love. Nothing for Christmas but my love.